What's up CEOs? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, I want to just extend you a warm welcome to our community of ambitious entrepreneurs who are dedicated to growing their businesses and just dedicated to the process of building generational wealth, okay? On this channel, I love to share expert advice, valuable insights, and practical tips just to help you navigate the world of entrepreneurship with confidence. If you need business credit for your next venture, then you are in the right place. The number one reason why small businesses are denied financing is due to poor personal credit. So on today's episode, I'm going to be teaching you how to boost those credit scores using AI. Ooh, let's get right into it. So I'm going to be showing you how to use AI, specifically ChatGPT, to repair your credit and get collections, charge off, late payments, inquiries removed in the comfort of your home without printing any letters, going to the post office. Yeah, we don't have to do any of that. That is so... 2018 all right new and approved and this is how we're going to do it now um ideally you want to have a 700 plus credit score when you're looking to get business credit or corporate credit right of course the higher the score you have the better now i'm going to be telling you exactly what makes up your personal credit scores and then how to use chat gpt to get any accounts removed from your credit if necessary all right so let's tap into it all right so the fundamentals of your personal credit consists of these five factors payment history which is number one this is responsible for 35 percent of your score huge we got to be making sure we're paying our bills on time right that is the ultimate sign of credit worthiness next is your utilization your amount owed specifically related to your credit cards right this is only calculated by your credit card debt versus your credit card limits when you're looking to obtain financing you want your credit utilization to be anywhere between 10 to 30 percent honestly i prefer it to be like paid off but understand that the closer you get to 30 percent the less amount of funding that you could get approved for so 10 to 30 percent is ideal and how you calculate your utilization is literally the amount you owe divided by your limit and you want to do that for every single account individually that you have on your credit report whether you're the primary user like you own the account or if you're an authorized user meaning that you're on someone else's account they're both very important next is your length of credit history okay how long you've had credit accounts so um, ideally you wanna have at least three years um, on your minimum or uh, reporting. Now, if you're in the early stages of building your personal credit, I recommend that you can check out being an authorized user. I'm gonna actually explain that a little bit later on in a video, how that works. Next is credit mix. So the diversity of your uh, personal credit profile, like having student loans, auto loans, credit cards, a mortgage loan, right? The more diverse your credit is, the better. And then last but not least, is new credit like having inquiries on your credit report and new accounts on your credit report okay now the formula to a perfect credit right it's a two-part process if you do have negative accounts on your credit report then you definitely need to go through the repair process of getting those derogatory accounts removed getting those negative accounts removed but the second part is just as important which is building your credit establishing good uh, good payment history on several different accounts is just as important. Um, I own a credit repair company and a lot of people come to us and they just want us to get things off. Um, but we tell them like, it's just as important to get things off your credit as building your credit, adding that new history, right? So even if everything that's negative on your credit report was to get removed tomorrow, if you haven't been building your credit report or your credit scores, and then you're still going to have a low credit score and you're still going to get denied financing. So they are both equally important. I cannot express that enough. All right. Now the credit repair timeline looks looks like this right so first you want to obtain your a copy of your credit report in the um, description below i'm going to put a link for you to access your credit report and um, i'm going to be showing you a demo using the same credit monitoring 
we use smart credit so uh you want to be able to identify what's on your credit where there needs to be improvement um that would be step two and then step three is gathering any evidence to just support your dispute if applicable right um because you might notice some things on your credit report that is just absolutely inaccurate and you have the evidence to prove so so the more evidence you have if you do the better and then next number four step four is just preparing your disputes to send them out that four i'm going to be showing you how to do so at the comfort of your home right from your computer without having to you know go to the post office or anything like that and then five is just risk and repeat now i want to let you know that credit repair is a process right i don't care what any other person on the line is telling you about credit repair it can take time to restore your credit all right it took you a while to mess it up it could take you some time to correct it all back um, but there is a fast track option the fast track option is calling the credit bureaus and putting some fire to their all right, basically what people do is just prepare disputes, send them out, wait 30 days, prepare disputes, send them out, wait 30 days. No, soon as you send out those disputes, if you really want to repair your credit as ASAP and speed up the process, as soon as the bureaus get your disputes, you want to call them and ask them for reviews immediately and just be on top of them, right? They're getting thousands of pieces of mail a day right so you calling calling them will put you above everybody else who's sending out those those letters right and i'll and i'll get more into that a little bit later all right so here are common reasons why bureaus are legally required to remove accounts from your credit report now there's a consumer law that protects me and you from financial institutions in the credit bureaus which is called the fair credit reporting act and here are the most common reasons why accounts are supposed to be removed or getting removed from credit reports number one is inaccurate information you're going to see what i'm talking about in a minute like 95 percent of content that's on your credit report is most likely inaccurate whether they have wrong balances incomplete information wrong account numbers wrong payment history something that i always see common is juniors and seniors accounts mixing up or twins accounts mixing up and everything's just all over the place second is outdated information like personal information being outdated and old um inquiries might be old accounts might be old right um third is identity theft right if you are unfamiliar of any inquiries or any accounts that's on your credit report and you um feel like you were the victim of identity theft then that's another reason to have accounts removed like i was a victim of identity theft with my mother opened up bills in my name when i was like 18 years old i did not give her permission to do so i did not know anything about that got on right off right don't play with me like that mama four is discharge debt now if you have filed the bankruptcy right if you file bankruptcy any accounts that was included in your bankruptcy are legally not supposed to be reporting to your credit report negatively right so let's say you had a uh, credit cards let's say you had a verizon phone bill and a chase credit card included in your bankruptcy if those accounts are still on your credit report showing a negative balance or negative payment history or whatever then that is a violation of fcra and supposed to get updated or removed and last but not least is unauthorized inquiries like if you ever went to the dealership and you may have told a dealer like i only want to run my credit one time with one bank or two banks and you leave the dealership and credit karma tells you, you got 20 new inquiries yeah that's unauthorized i didn't authorize that i didn't sign anything i didn't tell you you have the uh uh ability to do that right so those are those can easily get removed as well now here ha here is more details of the laws associated with the fair credit reporting act we have factual disputing and we also have metro to complete Clients. Now, um, factual disputing essentially just requires credit reporting agencies to investigate and correct any accurate information within a reasonable time, right? So like I was mentioning before on number one, on the last slide, this can include incorrect account balances, wrong account numbers, um, payment history, anything, right? So they're required to update, remove inaccurate and unverifiable information, right? If they're unable to verify that information, show proof of verification, then that's a violation as well. Now, Metro 2 compliance is how the bureaus are supposed to report the information, right? 
So with Metro True compliance, it requires the credit bureaus uh, how they are able to collect and report this information. For example, they must verify the accuracy of the information with the lender before adding it to your credit report, right? And they must update if there's any changes to your credit report. Um, the whole point of Metro 2 compliance is just to make sure that fair and accurate information is reporting. Again, with Metro 2 compliance, it's a compliance that the bureaus are supposed to abide by. How is your account reporting? And also the proof of verification, right? So this usually comes into place with our disputing process when the bureau says, you might get a response back after disputing and the bureau say that this account has been verified or this information has been verified then i'm going to make sure i hold them accountable for metro 2 compliance to show them that proof of verification and how they was able to verify with my lenders the accuracy of the information on my credit report so once you um once you get a hold of your credit report i want to go over a couple accounts with you so you understand what you should be looking for now when you sign up with smart credit you're going to be able to see accounts that looks like this right you only want to be disputing accounts as you can see at the bottom where it says um uh, the payment history you want to be disputing accounts that has negative payment history right collection status charge off status or late payments now when i tell you that a lot of information on your credit report is inaccurate or incomplete then this is what i mean i've sh i have red arrows to show all the inconsistencies across the three bureaus with this particular account this accounts a credit card with capital one that's in collection status and as we can see the balances is different across all three bureaus right the um last time it was verified incomplete um the date it was opened is inconsistent the close date is inconsistent right um last payment is different from equifax than experian uh past due amount is the same that's fine credit limit equifax is not reporting anything so um what i'm going to do with this account I'm going to um, create a dispute letter using ChatGPT, which I'm about to show you in a minute, asking to uh, verify the information on, with Capital One because it is incomplete, inconsistent, and inaccurate information. I'm gonna tell ChatGPT, well, let's wait for all that. I'm gonna show you live how it works. Second okay. example, um, here's another account. Now, high balance is inconsistent. Date of last activity is different. Balance old, right? As you can see, TransUnion says paid off experience in equifax there's still a balance so best believe i'm gonna say this account has been paid off but it's still reporting the balance it says with transunion it says paid but then experience in equifax it says derogatory okay which one is it is it paid or is it derogatory y'all come on now past due amount it says zero 391 now it works in my favor for me to rely on the information from transunion so what i'm going to say is this account has been paid off um no balance right but however it's reporting collection status um charge off status poor payment history whatever the case may be and i'm going to ask for that account to be removed because it's reporting inaccurate information so let's go ahead and do a live example of chat gpt and how that looks like based off of the two accounts that i just showed you okay all right so i have chat gpt pulled up here and um it's free to use. ChatGPT is absolutely free to use. And I'm going to go ahead and prepare letters. Now, you need to prepare a separate letter for each bureau. You could list out multiple accounts, but just make sure that you just change the recipient's name depending on what bureau is going to. Let's do an example with this Capital One. So, I'm going to tell ChatGPT to create a dispute letter to Experian for a Capital One. Um, you wanna put like the account number in here too, but I'm gonna just put X for example here. For a Capital One credit card account number, I'm gonna just make up one. That's in collection status, okay? So if you have multiple items, what you're gonna do is instead of saying for A, I'm gonna say for the following. So just to do an example. I'm gonna I'm gonna just list it. Capital One credit card, Verizon collection account number. I'm spelling stuff all wrong, but it's okay because this AI is gonna pick up that's in collection status. And let's do one more. So I could say what T D Bank auto loan account number, whatever. That's a repossession. The 
reason why i am disputing these accounts is because the information that is reporting is a violation of the fair credit reporting act the information is incomplete and accurate okay i am requesting that these accounts are removed immediately okay here's the key right i will cc the cfpb right let me open this for y'all and attorney general's office okay here's another banger that we're gonna add cite specific cases where this is for experience where Experian was sued for violating rights compared to mine so here's the key points i'm telling chat gpt ignore my errors y'all <laughs> i'm telling chat gpt create a dispute letter to experian right i want them to dispute the following accounts with the account number and the status of those accounts the reason why i'm going to dispute them because i noticed that there's incomplete and inaccurate information which is a violation of the fair credit reporting act and i want these accounts removed immediately i'm going to be ccing the consumer financial protection bureau which is cfpb and attorney general's office right and then also i'm telling chat gpt to cite uh specific cases where experian was sued because they did not adhere to the consumer law so i'm coming out the bat swinging right so this way chat gpt let's see what they do hmm. Okay, let's see how this does. Let's read it. What you're gonna do is just literally copy, if you like this letter, you're gonna copy this letter and add it to Google Drive and just fill in the blanks, your name, address, date. Okay, this is going to Experian. I am writing to formally dispute the accuracy and completeness of the information that Experian has reported on my credit file. I have recently viewed my credit report and I found that there are several accounts specifically listing those accounts, which are currently in collection status that contains erroneous and incomplete information i am exercising my rights under the fair credit reporting act to request an immediate investigation and correction of these inaccuracies now it's giving me paragraphs of each account of why this needs to be removed you can review it you know and make adjustments if there's things that you do not like and you want chat to rewrite it you can just send another message right saying rewrite but for the verizon collection specify this or specify that or update that and they will continuously update and make changes so it doesn't look like they added a case in here so i'm gonna tell chat gpt to rewrite the letter rewrite the letter but cite a specific case where Experian was sued that's relevant so it's going to rewrite again after reviewing it i noticed that that was missing they're going to rewrite it and again if you notice any other information that doesn't seem right or you know they didn't type it right just type it in here all right here goes the case i would like to bring it to your attention so i think what happened before is i prompted site specific cases and ChatGPT is like it's way too many cases but if i said case it's just one case so that's how they was able to get it they said the case of smith versus experian where the information was inaccurately reported right resulting in severe financial consequences yeah so let me bring this to your attention right you don't want to f up because i can possibly sue you for that all right i like this letter so i'm gonna copy this part and add it to Google Drive or Word document or whatever the case may be. And then I'm going to prepare, I'm gonna edit the information that needs to be filled in, right? When you're sending your documents, you want to um, attach your proof of identity. So attach an ID and proof of address, which could be a utility bill. Um, definitely no like collection bills, please don't attach that. Utility bill, lease agreement, mortgage statement, right? Phone bill, something like that. And then a copy of my credit report. So um, you can literally just download your credit report from Smart Credit and attach it. So what you want to do now, once you have your PDF created, let me show you here how, how it's gonna work. So just to give you an example, I'm gonna copy that information from ChatGPT, right? Make sure you edit it before you send it out like this and make the correct changes. I'm not gonna do that in this video. And then I'm going to um, download this as a PDF. Once you get the document, you're going to insert pages by right clicking and clicking insert pages attach like i said your i copy of your id attach 
proof of address and then also attach a copy of your credit report. Now, once you have that ready to go, right, you have your letter to Experian done, you're gonna do the same thing for TransUnion and Equifax, wherever you see necessary. And then this is how we're going to um, send out the letters to the credit bureaus without having to go to the post office. So what you wanna do is create an account with um, LetterStream, okay? Create an account with LetterStream. And this is how you are going to upload your letters to LetterStream to send it out to the credit bureaus, okay? And here is the price. It's free for you to create an account, but then it costs just for them to send it out. But it's fairly similar for you considering going to the post office and spending time there and stuff like that. So it's only a dollar, about a dollar to send out letters. If you wanna send it certified mail, it's about $7. Now, um, sending it certified mail was verify that the credit bureaus have received the letters. I don't recommend that you start with this, but if you send your first letter and then the bureau say, oh, they're not receiving your disputes or they never received an the investigation, then that's when I will start sending certified mail so I can have the receipt on deck okay so you cannot say you didn't receive nothing because I got receipts all right but certified mail is kind of expensive especially if you're going to be sending multiple letters and stuff like that start with regular letters all right you want to create a free account and then you just upload your letters using that free account and I'm going to put in the description below the addresses to send your disputes too. All right, so if you want to expedite the process to getting your credit repaired, as soon as the credit bureaus receive your disputes, then you want to call the fraud department for each bureau and demanding that they investigate on the phone with you to have those accounts removed. And essentially, you're just reiterating what you wrote in your letter, right? I'm gonna go ahead and warn you. Sometimes the credit bureaus are going to, they might intimidate you. They might seem like, oh, this account belongs here and stuff like that. Like that so just make sure that you're very confident you're very stern with your requests and sometimes you might have to call back a few times right sometimes it's just about getting the right person on the phone but make sure that you're speaking to the fraud department because this is the department that has the capability to get the accounts removed from your credit report all right so the last thing i want to show you is the building process so as you are waiting for accounts to get removed from your credit report, just make sure that in the meantime, you are working on building your credit. Now you might be thinking to yourself, how do I build my credit if I cannot get approved for anything? You want to start with builder cards, okay? Builder cards, you can get approved even with bad credit. And a lot of times they don't even do a credit check. So for example, self, credit strong and even getting a secured card which means that you're putting up your own funds to get access to that credit card so you can check with like a local credit union in your area or um, whoever you're banking with to see if they offer personal secure cards right so when you get those builder cards reporting you want to make sure that you're paying those accounts on time every single month and then revisit in about four months if you're consistent with your credit repair process in four months you should have good payment history reporting from those builder cards and some accounts removed already from your credit report and then you could just go up the ladder as you can see up here right we're going up the ladder we go from builder cards to starter cards to advanced credit and then last step is baller status which you know we all want to be a baller right okay. that wraps up my tutorial of how you can effectively use chat gpt to repair your credit just some tips as you're going through this repair process make sure that you are patient and you're you are consistent okay you don't want the credit bureaus to be sending you responses and you fall off and it takes you a long time to respond because that can cause you to start all over and just being consistent is also key i wish you the best of luck as you're going through your repair journey if you need more guidance or assistance on repairing your credit then you can check out the description below and i'm going to share a link to how you can join our program to help you with your credit we do it for you if you found this video useful helpful make sure you like share subscribe let me know in the chat below how you feel if you have any questions on what i went over i'll be more than happy to help and assist you but best of luck on your journey and i will see you next time peace